Well, that, I think that really depends a lot upon philosophically your uh, worldview. Um, but from a Christian worldview, being centered, I think, means uh, to be um, centered in the uh, core values of Christ and knowing what God has called us to and what God says we are and who he has created us to be and understanding that core value, the core truth of who we are and being centered in that, uh, being grounded, um, having, whether it's through meditation or through studying of the scripture or through just devotional time or prayer time, um, it's on a daily basis, beginning our day or ending our day or both, um, saying, okay, pausing, and I, I like to use the scripture from uh, the Old Testament in Elijah when he, God says, Elijah, be still and know I am God. Mm -hmm. And the word know in the Hebrew there is a really interesting word. Um, basically, it means to experience me and to understand in an experiential way who I am and to come to the place that we have to still our mind, still our life long enough just to, just to be centered in the knowledge of who he is. There are a variety of principles that we can say that are universally true, from the physical to um, the relational to the emotional. Um, one of them, you know, I studied physics when I was in high school, way back, that's many years ago, by the way. Um, <laughs> the, the reality is that gravity is a fact. It's a universally true principle. It doesn't matter what, what spiritual belief you have or philosophical system you want to live by, gravity uh, is universally true. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. Uh, don't jump out of a 10-story building unless you have a really soft landing or a, a good parachute that opens pretty quick because, you know, the drop isn't so bad, but it's the sudden stop that becomes a problem. So when we talk about universal principles, we talk about those things that we can look at that says, you know, it doesn't matter what you believe, these things are true. And, and so when we approach somebody that we know has a different philosophical view viewpoint, um, that's kind of how we try to approach things. Well, it depends on their philosophical system. Uh, obviously, an atheist doesn't have moral absolutes. Um, but they do have morals and ethics. They do have core beliefs that they have. And so identifying in conversation with somebody is we try to identify, well, what are your core beliefs? And those core beliefs are, in fact, their value system. Everybody has a value system, uh, whether it's... Um, um, centered in Christ or a Christian philosophy or if it's centered in some other philosophy. Um, you know, I have a doctorate in philosophy, those are some of the things we, we talked about. I, I still remember a class I had on contextualization, that was the name of the class, I had no idea what that was. Uh, but it's understanding what are the core values or truths of the universe um, from a Christian viewpoint and how do you express those in such a manner that you are using and entering and engaging people in their culture and their understanding. And so when we talk about moral absolutes as a Christian, I would take those things as a principles or values and put them in such a manner that I engage them in their culture and their viewpoint and help them to understand what their moral values are or their absolutes. Because I do believe that no matter what you think your belief system might be, everybody has some absolute values they hold that they try to follow. Yeah, our culture really talks about the concept of tolerance. Mm -hmm. And uh, the scripture really, I think, talks about acceptance. Um, I think tolerance is um, really not what we want. Uh, I find uh, I'm tolerating you as kind of a holier than thou. It's uh, to me, I, I find it to be very um, problematic in the fact that we say, "Oh, be tolerant of somebody." Um, and, and so, our culture, I found, when we talk about this, whether it's you know, gays, homosexual issues, or abortion, or whatever. You know, uh, we're always told that we're supposed to be tolerant. And what I try to tell people, which I think is a much more foundational scriptural principle, but I think is a healthier principle. For, forget your philosophical viewpoint on this. It's, it's about acceptance. Acceptance is neither saying I agree or disagree. It just simply says I accept you as you are. Um, I am me. You are you. We don't have to be identical because we're not. We're unique. We're individuals. We don't have to be identical, identical to cooperatively get along. Um, I'm not into trying to control other people. I'm, I'm just trying to control myself. Uh, I have enough trouble with self-control than, than trying to control somebody else who I have no way to control and uh, very little uh, influence, uh, particularly if we are 
on opposite sides of the fence. Right. So it's coming to the place of having loving acceptance. If you can't accept yourself very well, by the way, it's hard to accept others. If you find things in yourself that you are not living by your values and you're struggling internally, then you're going to find that it's going to be hard to accept others as well. Um, I want people to live according to their value system. Um, I had a, I've had people in here who are homosexual. We don't get a lot of them, and that's okay, but uh, what we do try to tell people is, how, uh, what do you believe about yourself? And what are your values? And are you living by your values? My job isn't to tell people how to live. My job is to help people live how they believe. And it's not my job to change their belief unless they want to engage me in what I believe about the scripture and what I think the scripture says. If they want to engage me in all that, I'll talk to them and I'll share scripture and say, this is what I understand. What are you going to do with it? Because you have to live your life. It's not my life.